Hello to those of you watching. My name is Ricky Zoltowski, and I'm currently a P3 at Wayne State Pharmacy School. The other presenter today with me is a fellow P3, Mutaz Juma. We have uh, two P4s working on this with us. The name of the study is The Effect of Intravenous Hydralazine on Short-Term Blood Pressure Variability in Non-Critically Ill Hospitalized Patients. Doctors Christopher Giuliano and Melissa Lapari are the faculty overseeing the project. Here's the introduction to our study. So from past literature, we know that increases in blood pressure variability increases the risk of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Currently in the AHA ACC guidelines for the treatment of hypertension, there are not clear guidelines for transiently elevated blood pressure unless it falls under the category of hypertensive urgency or emergency. Despite this, it is common in, in medical wards, especially in our center, uh, for the the use of short-acting IV antihypertensives, such as hydralazine. Uh, but we have observed significant variability in acute blood pressure response in these patients receiving the IV hydralazine. Uh, we do not understand which patient-specific factors influence variations in response. Moving on to the methods of our study. So this study was a retrospective observation uh, single center study conducted at St. John's Hospital in Detroit. Currently for our sample size, we are looking at 124 patients. Our goal is to create a model which will predict the blood pressure response to IV hydralazine given patient specific factors. The parameters we are using to measure this are average real variability and the coefficient of variation. An in-depth explanation of these terms will be later on in this presentation. Our goal sample size, uh, like I said, was 124 patients at Ascension St. John and then in 100 additional patients as a validation sample at the Ascension Macomb Oakland Hospital. For our outcome measures, uh, we have the primary outcome as average degree of blood pressure variability at six and 12 hours post IV hydralazine administration. And for the secondary outcome, it's the percentage of patients experiencing adverse effects attributable to IV hydralazine use. Uh, then for our data analysis, we are using a multilinear regression for the continuous variables part in ANOVA test, and for the categorical variables, we are using frequency distributions. Hi, my name is Mirtaz. I'm a third year pharmacy student at Wayne State. With respect to the inclusion and exclusion criteria, we are including patients that have three blood pressure measurements within 12 hours after administration, as well as one baseline blood pressure within one hour from the administration time. And these are all adult patients that are not pregnant and non critically ill and do not meet the criteria for hypertensive emergency, which would be systolic blood pressure greater than 220 and diastolic blood pressure greater than 120, plus or minus 24 hours from the administration time. We are also excluding patients that have a history of IV drug use and those who are psychotic or agitated and on basal pressures, as well as those um, anti-hypertensive medications that may be started within the time window of interest in terms of monitoring or looking at the blood pressure variability, as all of these criteria can interfere with the blood pressure. The reason why we have this exclusion criteria is because they, they, they affect the blood pressure acutely and we want to control for these factors. In terms of the parameters that we are using to measure blood pressure availability, we are using measurements ARV and CV. And here's what they are and how that calculation is conducted. And with respect to the results and conclusions, they are currently pending. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.